joined now by Andrew Cooper. Andrew, thank you so much for dropping in. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes, I'm the creative director for Gravity Matrix mm -hmm. and I run a small team of designers, mm -hmm. art workers, uh, high-end creatives and a production team. Um, and we produce campaigns from pencil sketch right the way through to the end process, yep. end process being print um, and also online and lots of digital work now, hence why I'm here. Great. <laughs> Can we take a look at some of your projects? Absolutely, no problem Thank at all. you. Okay, so the type of projects that I work on will be, for example, I'm going to actually show you a pitch that I did that we, that we won, which is fantastic. Um, essentially, what I've got here um, are the way that we present or I present to our clients. Yeah. So this is um, Epson. This is the Epson Film Festival. Yeah. So basically, what they were going to do is to showcase their brand new projectors all around the country. Yeah. And we come up with the key graphic to be able to uh, showcase that. So it's nice and dynamic. It grabs the attention, yeah. and, and people obviously. Um, energized by it. So this is um, the way I work, the way that we work, is we put an inspiration board together. Mm -hmm. The presentation here, which I won't go through everything, but there's uh, five concepts here basically. Um, we lead with some inspiration to show the client this is how we, this is, this is what we've been thinking. Yeah. The young dynamic team has seen things on MTV, Channel 4, inspiration from all over the place, Bahamas, yeah. from up north, absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we've put some pencil concepts together, a thought process on the left hand side yeah. and the strap lines which I think are really important that tie up to the creative on the right hand side. Yeah. The way I brief my team and my design team is that should the A3 presentation boards be seen by another creative director, sorry, a marketing director, yeah. then um, they should be able to pick up these concepts and understand exactly what their marketing yeah. is actually doing and what they're trying to promote. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's con this is how we run You've the You've really drilled it down by this point. To the, to absolutely, the absolutely. And, and what I find is because, because they're pencil concepts, uh, we can actually get five concepts um, out in the, in the time it would normally take for us to do Photoshop one concept in mm -hmm. digital form. Mm. So to be able, to, so it's a privilege to be able to go to a client and say, "Here's five concepts. Yeah. This is our ideas. Mm. It's not finished. It's by no way near finished, but it's just inspiration and ideas." Yeah. What they generally do is come back two days later. This is the concept we want to go for. Yeah. Then we go to Photoshop, InDesign, yeah. Illustrator, etc. Yeah. Um, it just streamlines the whole process. So that's one way that, that we work with the pitch process. But yeah. we also use Adobe Muse. Um, right. Adobe Muse is really handy for the pitch process because yeah. it's very conceptual, very quick, easy to put websites together. Uh -huh. um, and we found a lot of success. Um, so as, as well as having the pencil drawings, we also have the ability to show something online. Something quite dynamic then as well. Ab absolutely. As yeah. soon as a client sees something moving, some animation, Animation, some videos that have been embedded from um, from Vimeo, um, etc. It, it's absolutely it's absolutely fantastic. Great, and you've got an example of one of these. Yes, I have. Yep. Yeah. So this is um, a, a large pitch that we did for Johnson Johnson. So this is um, this is Bio Patch. It's a concept that I came up with um, a few years ago now, actually, but it's only just kind of come into fruition. Yeah. Um, so it's to do with a war uh, a war on infection. Yeah. Um, it was quite a dynamic graphic in itself. Anyway, when I come up with kind of the the paint on the face, it was yeah. not sure can we do this or not. So it was quite a challenging. Um, concept anyway um, but what you'll see here is part of the pitch process that I delivered to Johnson Johnson I then showed them what we can do online yeah um, and this for me was almost the uh, the pinnacle to our pitch because not only can I show a nice looking home page I can talk about the products I can show our creative yeah. move in um, you can really show you you've understood the project fully and they can visualize it straight away uh, can't ab absolutely they? Um, a, a website for me is it, not just about um, putting um, something together this is just an online page this is the heart of their business mm. I, I've put a training section in here which has um, yeah. Vimeo videos yeah. there's a resources section which has downloadable PDFs yeah. there's a social media section to show yeah. how they can use it um, socially 
and obviously a contact call to action. So it, it really does become um, the heart of their business. The example I've got on screen here is actually I used a Google map, but I yeah. pinpointed all the hospitals in the country. Yeah. So very, um, obviously very relevant for, for yeah, those guys. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you marked all of this up in Adobe Muse or yep. built it all in Adobe Muse, a fully working website for the pitch itself. Um, how long did it take you to do that? Um, realistically, it probably took Bearing in mind the print artwork and the assets already there, yeah. it probably took three to four days. So that's such a quick turnaround, isn't uh, it? Absolutely, and completely yeah. blew them away, which yeah. is just fantastic. Won the, won the business, right? Absolutely, up. yeah. I'd like to say that, yeah. <laughs> and for those of you who aren't familiar with Adobe Muse, Adobe Muse is a, a program to enable you to build websites mm -hmm. without writing any code. It's aimed at designers. Um, how easy was it for your design team to pick up and start working with that product? Very easy, um, purely because, in, in my opinion, the transition between InDesign and Adobe Muse is, is seamless, to be honest. Um, the key commands are exactly the same, placing yeah. imagery, yeah. putting text in. Yeah. It, essentially, it's print artwork, but online. Yeah. And to give my team, um, and to be completely honest with you, we're not coders, to give them the ability to be able to put a piece of artwork together mm. for online, the transition was very super simple and a fantastic piece of kit, to be honest. Uh, so you guys were early adopters of the Creative Cloud, weren't you? Yes, yes, very much so. Um, due for, from its uh, conception, I think we're back in 2011, 2012, I was very lucky to be asked to be involved in the beta, the beta testing right, of the program. Right. So from, from day one, I knew that it was going to be a very, very impressive program, um, particularly for myself, so a graphic designer uh, and all of my team to give mm. the guys the ability to be able to produce websites. Mm. It, it's just fantastic. We, we, we don't need to employ web developers for this kind of stuff. There's mm. still a place of web developers, quite clearly. Yeah. Um, but for the small, short, sharp websites um, that we are, we are producing for pretty much every campaign, mm. this is without a doubt the go-to program. Yeah, so you work a lot with illustrators Photoshop, InDesign, I imagine. Yes, very much so. Um, but what is it about Adobe Muse that's enabled you to do as a business that you couldn't previously do? It, it just allows us to put our content online for mm. our clients, for, us, for ourselves. Um, but to, to, be, to be honest, the way that I approached using Adobe Muse and actually um, embedding it into my team, I, I sort of asked Adobe Muse all the questions before I pitched it into my managing director. Yeah. So does it do SEO? Yeah. Does it do um, jQuery slideshows? Yeah. Does it support social? Yeah. Is, is it responsive? Yeah. It ticked all of those boxes. Yeah. And what I found is every week I would go back to the application, it would um, update with a new set of tools. <laughs> yeah. And it's That's just, the joy of the creative cloud, isn't oh, it? <laughs> oh, absolutely. It, it gives me goosebumps. All the time. It, it really does. It, it is it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Great. And how has it impacted your business? Um, it, for me, it's turned the business upside down purely right. because we were creative production led. So mm. we were creating design for print. Yeah. But for my team that obviously creates the design for print to be able to create for online as well, yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, the turnover has certainly gone up purely just to Adobe Muse. And really? it's crazy <laughs> to say, yeah, it's fantastic. fantastic. Great. Well, I'm so glad you're getting so much out of it. I think it's a fantastic application, yep. of course. <laughs> it, it has its place. It's brilliant for yes. standalone websites, like you say, landing pages, campaigns, all of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And perhaps, as you say, also, you know, for more complex um, websites, you need more developer experience yes, in there. But yep. there's certainly within graphic design teams, it's almost a seamless process, isn't it, to move from, yeah, uh, like you say, in design and other applications. Yeah, absolutely. I, I find that we actually have a web developer on, on site as part of our team. Yeah. Um, he generally is the back end data guy setting the databases up. The way that Adobe Muse teams up with Business Catalyst is yeah. fantastic. And that's how I work it for my clients. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here's the concept, fantastic. Let's go to Adobe Muse. Yeah. Let's team it up with Business Catalyst. So it's all hosted. So you've got some anal Adobe. analytics. You've got Absolutely. some administration privileges yep. that you can set up. All of that sort of Without thing. Without a doubt, that's side. exactly what clients are, are asking for. Yeah. You know, who's going on? When are they mm. going on? Mm. Where are they coming from? Mm. Um, and like I say, to team up from Adobe Muse to Business Catalyst. Yeah, yeah it's great. And this release of Adobe Muse is the first time we've had a 64-bit native application, so it's rock solid, super fast performing. Yep. So you've selected some of the key features and elements that you work with the most in Adobe Muse, haven't you? Yes. Very Can much we so. take a look at those now? Yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is this is actually my website, which I'm going to give you a quick show through, if that's okay. But as you can see straight away. Uh, 
top right hand corner, yep. social media. Yep. Um, so it links up to all my social media accounts. We have a nice um, interactive jQuery slider, yep. contact information at the bottom. Yep. Um, but for me, it kind of comes into its own with um, examples like this. So I'm just going to show you. So links off to other websites, um, text sliders and, and, and movables. So great for testimonials, stuff like that yep. is a really great feature. Um, to be able to download PDFs at the top here, we have a, a jQuery slider that sort of showcases all of yeah. my work commercially and, and on a personal level. And how have you built these elements within the pages then? Uh, these are all assets that are available in the library from Adobe Muse, which I'll just show you, I'll just okay. show you now. Great. So along the right-hand panel here, we have what's called a widgets library. A widgets library um, speaks to itself really in terms of you're allowed to put buttons in there, contact forms, menus, panels, slideshows, social media, the yeah. covered off absolutely everything you will need uh, for, <laughs> for a website. And you can put widgets inside other widgets, can't yep. you, and kind of nest, nest things in there. It's essentially creating div tags, isn't it? And yes, it is. And divs within divs. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, what I've also done here, as you, you can see, I've actually put um, a Tumblr blog into my website. Mm. So inside the iframe itself, um, Andrew's News yes. is um, showcasing obviously the latest stuff that I'm up to. Um, and that is just another extra um, element from the uh, assets within inside the uh, application. Yeah. So how easy is it to add a widget to a page? Can you show um, us? To add, add a widget to a page, it simply is find the widget you require. So for example, OK, well, I'm going to put a slideshow um, into, the, uh, into my Muse file. I'll delete my Andrew's News blog just in the background there. And as you can see, simply with a drag and drop feature, mm -hmm. um, you can have a slideshow full screen, whatever size you require. This yeah. is what I love about Adobe Muse and when I talk to my team about it, whatever we design, yeah. it will not move, it stays in place. Yeah. Exactly what you see on screen is what you will get online. So, Because you're previewing, essentially you're previewing the website itself within the application as well, aren't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you, can, you can preview um, the live elements, so live elements being the moving jQuery sliders, yeah. the way the social media um, works and stuff, um, and it, it effectively is a live link to what's happening online. And how easy is it to customise the widgets that you then put into the page? Uh, Customising the widgets are, are super simple, and for the InDesign people out there, um, it's effectively like um, putting a border on a box, mm. colouring a background mm. up. The widgets are simply, simply as flexible as stuff like InDesign. So the panels are really similar. You recognise the interface to you straight away from the other design applications. Yeah, abs absolutely. It's very similar to InDesign, Photoshop, for example. Just think of the Photoshop now. Mm -hmm. You'll see on the right-hand side here, there's a layers panel. Yeah. So you, again, it's not just it's not just um, a flat website. You can build it up layer per layer, exactly like a PSD file. Yeah, yeah. And so we're very used to stuff like that. And I guess particularly if you put any scroll motion effects, which you can do with Adobe News mm -hmm. in there, it's important to get the layers right so that absolutely. they're moving correctly across each other. Yeah, yeah. I think that they, they've, they've made it very user friendly because they're, they're putting themselves in the designer's shoes yeah. and, and what is familiar to people like me. So Photoshop, I, I need to have separate layers because I don't want to get confused. Yeah. Um, so they really have taken that in-design Photoshop mentality yeah. and yeah. put it into Adobe News. So you're organising your assets in the same way that you would in Photoshop, and, you know, Absolutely. that you can select whole groups of things to move yep. around all the Yeah, uh, ass assets, uh, obviously, are links uh, in InDesign, mm. work exactly the same way, placing of JPEGs, even the key command to be Apple D is exactly the same. Yeah, great, great. What else have you got to show us? Okay, um, what I'd also like to just um, show is how easy it is to actually embed other social platforms. So for example, yeah. something like this. This is actually my, my Pinterest um, page, yeah. which I've embedded into my website. So the client goes on to my website or, or any website, mm. they'll be able to see um, uh, my inspiration board in Pinterest. Mm. You mm. really can embed all the other platforms into um, Adobe Muse. So how do you do that? Um, how I do that is I'll actually show you, I was going to go to the next page and show you how to embed a, uh, a map, a Google great, map, great, if that's yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay, so this is, my, this is my contacts page. So as you can see, every, everything um, is here that you should know about me. So my location, where I live, how to contact me, how to get in touch. It's got my Twitter on there. It's mm. even got a live Instagram feed. Yeah. Um, but a client comes on, on board and asks for a Google map to uh, be placed in. You literally, as simple as, go to the widgets library 
down to social. And as soon as you open up social, this is where all of the um, all of the assets that are available to you to use, you yeah. can drag and drop exactly like the yeah. slideshow a moment ago. So you've got Facebook integration in there now. This is all quite new, actually, isn't very it? Very new, very new. And absolutely. you've got LinkedIn and PayPal options yeah. in there. Yeah. You've got the ability to set up all of your social media icons, as you mentioned as well, and also embed YouTube and Vimeo absolutely. videos as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, for me, Adobe News team have have thought what would need to go into a website. Yeah. No stone is left unturned. Everything socially um, is available for the likes of me to drop in. Okay, mm -hmm. I need a PayPal link. No problem at all. Yeah. It's all PayPal supported. Yeah. That, that is, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, great mm -hmm. stuff. So let's put a Google map in the page. Uh -huh. So click onto the widgets library. Again, all of the options come up, but down to social. Um, here are all of the um, social media options for you. I'm simply drag and drop in a Google map onto the page. Um, at the moment, it's got the Adobe address, but bear in mind we're close to the O2. I thought I'd put the O2 in. Just Great, to let's see. Have a play. There is. That's right. super quick, isn't it? And there you go. And so that's talking directly to Google Maps there. Absolutely. Making that link for you. Absolutely. And that's the code embedded directly. So you're not even having to go to Google Maps, copy no. that code, set any of the sizes for the map or any of that there. No. You do it all from within the Adobe Muse. Absolutely. Software. And again, that is um, a fairly recent, recent change because, like you say, you have to go to Google, get the dimensions, yeah. but now it is a simple drag and drop and then move the box to as big as you like. Fantastic. What else have you got to show us? Okay. I can also show you how simple it is to add contact forms for me is actually really, yeah. really important. So a contact form, again, widgets library, back over to forms, obviously, to have a website up. I'm simply just going to drag a form in position like that. And as you can see on screen here, it has um, who to send the email to, yeah. um, it has what the form is going to be called, cell phone numbers, um, even has BC Captcha, obviously mm. for security and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, single lines, multi lines, they've really answered absolutely every question for a contact So form. they've put some information in there for you, but you can also add multiple uh, fields to that form as absolutely. much as you like. And then, and then you can presumably format those fields as well? Yep, as simple as like, again, um, very similar to uh, InDesign. Mm. The functions are very similar. Click, uh, you can change the, the colors, the borders, the typography, absolutely yeah. everything. For me, something that's really important here is that um, the contact forms can now be supplied to your host and it right. will um, and it will talk to your host as opposed to being business catalyst service. Right, right, okay. So how important is in browser editing to your clients and CMS? Yeah, it's very, very important. Um, the clients would like to control their own websites, they want to control their own content, mm. their images, mm. and that is what Muse via in browser editing gives you. Um, it simply is a case of logging on to in browser editing dot yep. um, you uh, input your URL address, you, your FTP details, really super yeah. simple um, data. And then it gives you access to your own website where you can change all of the text, um, all of the pictures. And, and what I find really, really important here is that although the client is going and amending their own website, mm. you as a, an Adobe Muse user mm. then get a notification to say mm. your client has amended their website. Yeah. Do you want to update your Muse file to be relevant to the current data? Fantastic. Yes. yes. <laughs> So you're all in sync all Absolutely, the time. Absolutely, very much Great. so. Great, and you can also check what they've done and make sure they haven't broken anything. <laughs> yes, very much so, yeah. yeah. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> so in browser editing, really useful capabilities there. What else have you got to show us? So as you can see on the right-hand side here, uh, these are all the resources that I've actually built, right. um, that I've collected because they're, they're the kind of stuff that I need from, to build my websites. Got you. So uh, you can build your own library of assets as you go. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then as well as that, um, you can click on the online button here, which will take you to a platform which will show you every um, available library element. So for example here, um, this is the Adobe Muse Creative Cloud area where we have featured add-ons. So these are actually widgets and templates that companies outside of Adobe have built and uploaded here to sell or give away for free, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's a, it's a great um, resource section. So you can see uh, these are the add-ons and yeah. then we can go to the resource section on the Adobe Muse website. There's a lot of companies now dedicating a lot of their business to producing these templates and widgets for us to use, aren't they? Abs <laughs> absolutely. And there, there, are, there are so many available. So 
what I actually decided to do is uh, build a web page and a website yeah. just to show to my team right. um, what's available to them. Great. So right. when they go to concept a website, um, they can click onto uh, this page here and it will show them home, pinned, menus, elements, text scrollers, right. everything you will need to build a website is, is in here Great. as a, an example dummy website. Great. So you've created some uh, widgets that you've customised and changed yourself and then they can easily access those and start using them within their projects as well. For Absolutely, with the yeah. native file, they can double click the Muse file, they have access to all of these, uh, effectively it's a copy and paste into their websites yeah. and roll it out for their clients. Nice, so really easy to work as a team. Absolutely. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so what else within Adobe Muse uh, would you like to show us? Uh, I'd like to show you Edge Animate, if, oh, that, yeah, if that's yeah. okay. There's great integration between Edge Animate and Adobe Muse. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. So Edge Animate um, is a very, very simple uh, application to use. Yeah. Um, it's it's effectively HTML5 animation. Yeah. Um, it's very similar to uh, to After Effects, but a lot simpler is what I'd like to kind of say there. Yeah. Um, so I've actually built uh, several HTML5 uh, concepts, and I'd like just to show you one now. I've noticed that you've got the lessons panel open mm -hmm. in Edge Animate. Is that how you learn to use the software? Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty much like all of the applications, really. You know, yeah. the the assets are there to be able to teach yourself and to you know the evangelists showing you how that they use the use the programs. Yeah. And that's ex exactly what I do. Okay, great. So um, what I've actually got here is just a simple animation. Um, it's a casino roulette wheel that I put together, but obviously the dynamic element here is the is the spinny wheel and, yeah. a, and a nice animation and a strap line and stuff just to show you. Yeah. Uh, again, it's just really engaging. Clients like to see something move in. Yeah. The fact that Edge Animate um, teams up with uh, Adobe Muse is yeah, it's absolutely awesome. And previously to create an animation like this, is that something you could have done yourself or within your team? Yeah, we could do it with inside the team, but to be um, um, it's very difficult because it was obviously Adobe Flash and yeah. Adobe Flash obviously we need to go across all of the devices we have to be yeah. mindful of that kind of yeah. stuff um, so as soon as Edge Animate came along again it's my role to kind of pre have a look at the application is it easy to use yeah. can we get it out there to our clients yeah. and with the Edge Animate um, automation with Inside Muse yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's definitely something that uh, we could learn in-house very simple to use. So when you've created an animation in Edge Animate how do you get it into a form that you can then sit within your Muse design? So just to, just to show you here this is a simple animation I yeah. put together on, on the train this morning Great. and as you can see down here it has the timelines um, all of the elements the images that, that I use the pixel size of the actual document itself. Yeah, so the left-hand panel kind of sets up all of the properties for whatever you currently have selected, whichever layer you've got selected within Ab your Absolutely, timeline. yes. And, and the process, I've simply just gone into Illustrator here, yeah. exported uh, from Illustrator to PNGs. Yeah. I've placed the PNGs into Edge Animate, yeah. and I've animated a simple I Love Muse, which I'm sure you'd like, <laughs> um, And of animation. course, we've got SVG support as well for people who need scalable yes. vector graphics yes. within their websites. Wh which, which is fantastic, because obviously that's available through the marketplace, the Creative yeah. Cloud marketplace, again, yeah. available to everybody on the Creative Cloud. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something that we use a lot, lot more now. Great. Um, in Edge Animate, it's very similar to Adobe Muse, where I can go to, file, once I've done the animation, yeah. file, preview in browser, and as you can see, it's a simple animation. You love Muse, uh, don't uh, you? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And then, like you say, the, the um, process of getting it from Edge Animate into Adobe Muse, there's yeah. a particular file format that it, um, that it can read, so I'll just show you that, show you that now. A yeah. simple um, Apple D place picture instead it's yeah. an animation yeah. this time. So you've exported it um, as an OAM package. Absolutely. Show us the setting for that, if okay. you don't mind, within no, no, Edge Animate. Okay, so basically what I've got here is um, my file, publish settings, yeah. all my settings are here. Um, very super simple animation, so it's just yeah. effectively publishing a .oa, .oam HTML file. Yeah. And I've noticed actually while you've got this page up, when you're publishing for web, which creates all your HTML code, all your assets, etc., you've now got the ability uh, to set the location for the images, audio, video, yes. all of that. We've just mentioned that with my colleague Rupert earlier on, and it's a really key new feature, isn't it? So you yes, can be absolutely. very clear about how you're managing where those assets sit within your website. Absolutely. Again, it's very similar to your InDesign and your Muse file. All your assets yeah. are in certain places. It's very, very controlled. Yeah. Um, and and uh, again, I feel that Edge Animate's really come a long way, and it I'm has. just scratching <laughs> the surface at the moment, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's a simple click and place the image yeah. or the OAM file and into news. And it's showing the first frame of the animation, but you've actually got a blank frame in the animations, which is why you're not seeing anything. Abs absolutely, but, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I can simply preview through the program, through Adobe Muse, as you, as you can see, Lovely. or I can go online and preview through the browser. Yeah. And one more thing to mention, if we go back to Edge Animate, it's easy now to make sure that your animations are responsive and scalable, isn't it? So yes, very much so. All you need to do is to just select the responsive scaling box. Which is here. Yes, fantastic. So really important for those of you who are creating animations for multiple screen sizes. One tick box sorts it out, and you can choose whether it scales by width or width and height, right? Yes, absolutely. Andrew, thank you so much for sharing all of those tips. I'm so glad that you're getting so much out of Adobe Muse, and you love it so much. And I hope all of you get to use it and benefit from it as well. We really want to hear from you, so take part in our Twitter competition by sending in a creative tweet to tell us about your top Creative Cloud features. Our Adobe panel of judges will select their favourite tweet from each Northern European country, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland and the UK. The winners will receive a 12-month membership to the Creative Cloud. But not only that, the overall tweet from all the regions will win a Microsoft Surface Pro 3. So get posting your tweets using the hashtag Create now. The competition is open from midday on the 10th of November till midnight on the 13th of November. And you can see full details, terms and conditions at this URL. Good luck.